Hey there, my name is Provis. Welcome to more Foundation in a currently unnamed town. And to be honest, I'm kind of wondering if we even need to name it. Do we call it Darby Hill Montessure again? Profsburg? Eh, we've gone through so many things at this point, who even knows? So the village is coming along fairly well. We are running into a few crunches right now, though, mainly food. Food is a thing we are gradually running out of. And it's mainly because the population simply has grown too large to continue supporting it. One thing I may want to do is honestly try to turn off my um, immigration. And I can actually go here and just disable it for now. Since we have more people than I currently need, why keep adding more in? I think that's going to be a safer way to go, at least for a little bit. We are trying to add more into the manor house. I want to get a tax collector office built up, which is going to help f solve some of our money problems. Though as long as we keep selling some SS goods, I think we'll be alright. And we are trying to get up a fisher's hut, which will allow us to start getting some fish, another form of food. And as long as someone is over here and working, we should be able to sell some of that off as well. At some point, we need to start thinking about where we're going to place down some sort of a military fortification. Where that's going to go, I don't really know. It would make sense to place it at the top of a very big hill. But we'd have to buy a lot of territory to make that one work, and it's pretty darn far away. It'd be kind of fun to build it on an island, but that's not exactly practical or very sensible, so I don't really know. Over here on a cliff face, a whole bunch of turrets along this? I don't know, maybe? We'll think about it, but yeah, there's a lot more we need to do. We do want to start making a lot more money, and a lot faster. A stonemason's hut would be one way to try to do some of that. If I were to place you, let's say, over here, close to where the stone is going to be stored. Um, if we place it right along here, actually, this ain't so bad. Yeah, and what I might do, I think what I do is I place this over here. It does take cloth. I've only got five left, so that's the last bit that I'm going to get. We can say that things like stone and polished stone specifically get stored over here. And then over here, we stop storing stone, and this can be a place we stack up. I don't know. How about just some extra lumber or something for now? Yeah, this seems reasonable enough. Fisher's Hut has been built down over here. You can only ever assign one fisherman, and I don't remember how much the fisherman gets per day. It's not as much as you would like. I can't remember if it's like 5 or 15 per day or something like that. Not very significant. It's not unusual to need a whole load of Fisher's Huts. You can just litter the entirety of the coastline with them. There's literally mods to correct for that because it's kind of, kind of breaks some of the aesthetics a little bit. If you have to have, like, 20 people getting fish, you know what I mean? Hey, there's the fishing spot right there. Okay, so I actually didn't know that they had to go to this. So I guess you want to generally place these as close to the fishing spawn as you can find. Which makes sense. Makes perfect sense. I don't know why I didn't think of that. Ah, and a stonemason. Okay, just one person. That's it, huh? Really? You can't have more than one? Okay, fine. Well, my idea is take the stone, start making polished stone. With polished stone, we sell it to the trader. And then the trader gives us lots of money. Speaking of money, let's spend some to improve the church in some way or another so I can get at least a little bit of splendor with our friends, the uh, clergy. Um, what do we want to add on to this? We could add on some sort of a stone gate and some walls around that, I think. A stone bell tower. Oh my, that looks so much better than the wooden one I just built. Gosh dang it. Some wooden crosses as decoration. Sure, why not? We place one on the tower over there and we place one up in front of the church. Sure, that seems fine. Very cheap way of getting myself a little bit of extra splendor. It's only two. We can get a little bit more out of the arrangement. What else would be good? A wooden chapel, inclined. Sure, if you feel so inclined, I'm good with that. There we go, tax collector. Let's get someone assigned. That person's gonna be so popular. Everyone loves the tax man, am I right? Anyway, with the tax man, though, what we can do now is if we go to our book over at Mjall, we can go to economy, taxes, and we could increase the tax rate. And it gives you some idea of just how much more you can drain your serfs before you're going to run into some serious happiness issues. Right now, I'm sitting at 126% happiness because we had an event, a fair. That's kind of what happened there. It's going to fall down to 100% sometime soon. But if I'm willing to sack 5% happiness, that's an extra 78 taxes. I think that's pretty good. Now, there are other things I still have to add to this manor house, unfortunately. Um, we could build a bailiff's office, which allows us to have a bailiff. And with a bailiff, we would be able to enact mandates. Mandates are these things right over here. We can spend some money to try and gain influence within the state. We can promote villagers. I don't think you need a bailiff for that one, actually. We can prospect mineral deposits. Yeah, these are all things. I don't feel like the bailiff's going to be that important to me right now. Um, I would say let's get a treasury so we can stack up more gold, but I'm not sure we even necessarily need that. Ugh. 
Actually, big issue I can see right now is we just seem to be running out of money pretty much non-stop right now. Hmm. Yeah, that doesn't feel very good. Um, okay. Well, if we can not buy things like tools and cloth for once, that would certainly help. If we could offload a lot more of my planks, that would certainly help. Ugh. What can I do to make a lot more money? Mm, only thing I can think of would be to, like, build the military fort. Which I think we have to actually unlock over here. Yep, military fort. There we go. I'll spend 25 to unlock it. But I suspect in order to actually build the dang thing, it's going to take me a lot of money. We have no choice but to raise taxes a bit more, I guess. 156 extra per month. Kind of works. So you may be wondering, what was the whole promoting villagers thing I saw just a minute ago? If you take a look at the mandate, once per month, you are allowed to promote villagers to a higher level. Right now, they're all just some lowly serfs. We can make them into commoners. That's a thing. You have to spend money to do that. You get extra taxes when you do. But they have higher demands as well. They have a uh, higher demand for comfort. They want to get more food variety, which we actually already are meeting with two different types of food, so that's fine. And they want to have other goods, such as clothing and stuff, bought at the market. Right now, I'm not producing any of that, so I'm not sure that's going to do me a whole load of good. I really feel like trade is my only way of having a chance at surviving here. Um, oh gosh, sell more stuff to the king. You know what? I've got 100 wood right now. And I need money, so that's fine. Um, thank you, King. Anyway, um, maybe we just go ahead and get another one of these stonemasons right over here. Sure, we could do that. But I need some cloth. I've already got some of that, so we'll be okay. And I can pull back a bit on how much lumber we are producing. And just start producing lots of stone and lots of polished stone. And just make money that way. It's more effective than planks. As far as what I can sell for with Northbury over here, we'll get three per polished stone instead of two per plank. Um, and, I don't know, it, it just I just feel like this is my only way of getting out of the hole. If we can't find ways of getting more money, we're really going to get bottlenecked very quickly. Ugh, maybe we just try placing down a very basic military fort. <sighs> maybe. Um, alright, I, I, think, I think we're going to. Um, we could try placing it up kind of close to the top of the hill, overlooking a lot of things. Kind of wish we had some more flat ground to work with. I also really wish I owned this tile right here. Which we could buy, but it's going to cost 250 coins, and I have to pay 10 coins in taxes per week. The more land we own, the more we have to pay to the king. Which I think is extremely unfair since I'm taking this otherwise unworked land and doing something useful with it. But fine, you know, who am I to complain? So if we want to get a military fort, what do we do? Fortified keep, training grounds... We need all of these things. Oh gosh, this is all gonna be very expensive, ain't it? Right, um, okay. We can place down a fortified keep, which is really just a glorified tower. Uh, and this is fine, I, I guess. Sure, you place one of those down, you place a little roof on top, you get yourself some stairs, like a gate or something, I don't really care what. How about, how about something like this? Sure, why not? That looks kinda good. And uh, yeah, this is just gonna be a glorified watchtower. That's all it's gonna be. Takes a freaking ton of planks to build, though. Good thing I've got a lot of them, huh? I like how these dummy builders built a door to nowhere. I mean, look at this. It's just... It's a black portal into nothing. <laughs> Why did you guys do that? That's totally out of order. What are some other things that I really want? We could start working on some farming. Um, or I can go ahead and start working on clothing. And if I have clothing, I feel like I'll be able to start promoting people up to commoner status. And with that, as long as they're happy, and they should be, I think we'll end up getting a fair bit of extra money. So we're going to go for clothing. Let's try for that. Uh, what do we need to do that, though? We need the Weaver's Hut, the Sheep Farm, and the Tailor's Workshop. Three whole new buildings! Amazing! Of course, no one wants to live next to sheep, which I find very unfortunate. Sheep shoops are very cute things, but okay. Um, where do we set up? Tell you what, we're gonna set up way over here for now. We can always get rid of this at a later date if we need to. And actually, since we're doing okay on things like food, let's go ahead and re-enable immigration, because we're gonna need some extra people to work all these new jobs. And here comes the military fort. Got it. All right, so with a fort, I'll need to assign some soldiers. Soldiers are basically going to be able to go on missions for the king. And the king will hopefully pay us handsomely. An army hath been raised. Forward march! The clamor of military exercises echoes throughout the village. 
Good reminder your people are safe, and as a result, we get 10% extra happiness. Nice! And we also have a noble duty from the king. Military Fort wants to be assured that you, his loyal vassal, will have everything we need to host an army. Um, okay. So the king gives me some weapons, as well as some influence I'll be able to spend later. Well, thank you for the weapons. What do I do with the weapons? I do not know. Sheep farm should be finishing right about now. Let's assign ourselves a shepherd. We can spawn sheeps. And I don't remember, back in the earlier access version of the game, you could just keep kicking this, like, pretty much forever. Um, and it was a very good way to crash the game when you had, like, way too many sheep running all over the place. I don't remember how many we need. One, two, three, four. Okay, see, it's saying, come on, don't abuse. I'm not looking to abuse nothing, all right? You just, wow, those are sheeps? You sure those are sheeps? <laughs> I see, like, little puff balls with legs. No, it's fine. Um, yeah, th th this'll be fine. This'll go away in time. I suspect the sheeps don't probably want to live amongst the trees like this. We should probably go ahead and cut some of these down. Oh, wow, those sheep grew up really fast. There we go. All right, those look more like proper sheeps. <laughs> Again, they're still kind of puffballs, but like, yeah, sure, why not? That's fine. So what do we want to do with all of my extra wool? Well, we want to get ourselves a weaver's hut for sure. This is going to let us start getting some cloth. It's a pretty good use of my time, I think. Um, do we want to set up over here, kind of close to the military fort? I guess we could. I think I'll leave this as mostly just a watchtower, and we'll build a proper fort elsewhere later on. For now, let's just go with something kind of like this. I'm getting really annoyed with these builders, for real. They take forever to do anything. Tell you what, I'm destroying the um, builder's workshop. Or maybe I'll place another one down or something like that. I don't know. But um, let's, let's place the builder's workshop a bit closer to the actual action. Since it seems to be free to place anyway, why not? There's our weaver. Okay, let's get at least one person over here for now. I've already stocked up 45 wool, which feels like a pretty good amount. I do wish that some of these buildings would show things like um, how much it produces per day on average, so it'd be a little bit easier to figure out what I should be uh, building for my downstream production buildings, but you know, this is gonna be all right. In the meantime, at least one weaver is gonna get to work. Eh, it seems like a pretty fast pace, honestly, to be start producing some extra stuff. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see how a for one for one ratio works. And maybe we can have two weavers and two sheep farms next to each other. And that might be enough to sustain our wool needs for a good long while. We should also get ourselves a tailor's workshop. Two common clothes for one cloth. Honestly, that seems like a pretty darn good deal. I'm happy with that. If we can start producing a lot of cloth, and honestly, we're doing pretty good on that front, uh, that's going to solve a lot of needs. So what we can do now is go down here to our marketplace and we can add in another stall. Specifically, we want the good stall, not the food stall. We had this earlier, the progression book has unlocked the good stall, which means we can set one up over here. Um, how about in this general vicinity? Yeah, why not? This seems all right. There's our tailor's workshop. One tailor, that's all we can do. 15 cloth goes into all the clothes. All right, we got a warehouse over here. Let's assign someone. This is gonna be mostly for getting some wool. Plus some cloth, plus some clothing, and I guess I could leave myself... Actually, let's go ahead and place the swords nearby. Just because it's right next to the military fort. We might as well store them nearby. Alright, so since we have a steady supply of food and we have some goods and such we can sell, I guess the next thing to do is to go over to the manor house, select a mandate, and yeah, let's go ahead and start promoting some folks. So, our carpenters, for example, you're all going to be commoners. Um, the fisherman's a commoner. The market tenders are going to be commoners. Eh, that's all good enough for now. Um, I don't want to spend every bit of money I've got, but this does mean that now, if I take a look at my book over here, we can take a look at the villagers. We can see their existing status. I could also take a look at the economy and taxes and see that these guys are going to be taxed at a different rate. If we increase taxes on the commoners, let's see... 28 per month with seven people there, so that's going to be four gold each, as opposed to... Technically, you could get no gold from the serfs, but at most, we get two here. Yeah, so you get a lot more taxes out of commoners. The higher you promote them, the more money you're going to passively start to generate. This is good. We're also probably going to see a few houses get destroyed here pretty soon in favor of um, more advanced structures, I guess? I'm pretty sure that's going to happen. I can't remember if that starts consuming my planks or not. I really wouldn't be surprised if that were the case. Oh, yep, we can actually see right here. A house is indeed upgrading. I got the pop-up for it. That means it must be true. It's this one right here. Amazing how they were able to construct a building using stone and tiles and stuff out of only wood. 
I like to know this power. It's incredible. All right, another market stall up and a running. Um, we need to sign clothing here specifically. We can start consuming that. Meant to do that earlier. So with three people here, yeah, we should be able to meet a lot of needs. What's the other option here? Common wares. I don't know how you make common wares yet. Is that something we'd have to get in a monastery? Could very well be, and we could just unlock this to have it around. That's another big monument we could work on. And you can send men, only men, not women, but only men to become monks at the monastery, and they will start producing common goods. Actually, wait, it does say monks and nuns. Have they revised the game to allow women to have uh, a role in the monasteries now? They might have. I don't know. We'll find out eventually. Yeah, get some more decorative stuff there. Hospitimum. Uh-huh, some architecture, walls, refectory, treasuries. All this stuff looks pretty good. I would like to unlock another trade route, this time to Middle. And from them, is there anything we can buy that we couldn't get before from Northbury? No, it's all new stuff. No better prices there. We can sell things to them, though. But nothing I'm actively producing. I'm kind of sad that no one wants to buy clothing. Only Davenport. And not even for very much. Ugh. All right. Well, fine, we'll go ahead and unlock this anyway. Um, at least we have a method of getting swords if I need it from the king. But yeah, uh, no wait, that's just a sell to them. Can I buy from anybody? Oh, Davenport, yeah, okay. So what I'm finding here is I need to start making bread. Yep, I need to start making bread. That's the next big thing. You know, I'm kind of tempted to say we should create another little population center up over here and then turn this into one big sprawling wheat field. I kind of like that idea. So let's go ahead and unlock farming as my next big production chain. So this is gonna open up a three new buildings, the wheat farm, the windmill, and the bakery. Okay, um, I believe that the wheat farm actually does produce a pretty hefty amount of wheat. So I might be able to get away with just having like one, maybe two wheat farms and like two or three windmills. And then follow that up with one or two bakeries and that might be enough to produce a ton of food. So let's go ahead and start by just placing one farm over like this, I guess. Boom. It's gonna take some more tools and some more planks, of course. And I still don't know how to produce my own tools, which is unfortunate, but it's okay. I like, by the way, that we're starting to like gradually work our way up the hill. I don't know, is it just me? Or like, is this beautiful? Is this cool? Oh, here's something. Build a monastery. Our monastery will accept either just monks, just nuns, or both. Well, yeah. I mean, I'll do both. Why not? First of the wheat farms should be coming online right about now. We can have up to three farmers. Plant crop field. Yeah, that is what I want to do. So, okay, there's actually a fertility map mode, and I did not realize that. Um, it appears... Oh my gosh, this would be an amazing spot for nothing but farms. Um, it does seem like we're in an okay spot. So what I'll do then is say, yeah, this whole area, basically, it is A-OK -okay with me if you decide to go ahead and plant some crops. It does seem like there's a correlation to having a lot of trees and planting down the fields. Maybe that's the big thing, right? You chop down a bunch of these trees, you get these out of the way, they stop taking the nutrients out of the soil, and it's easier to plant down some, uh, some wheat. I don't know, maybe. Oh, there we go, there we go, look at them. Look at them just throw those seeds and immediately they take root. Ah, oh, it's the magic wheat field! Okay, yeah, wonderful. Uh, I don't know how much we're gonna start producing out of this with only two farmers and this much space, but we're gonna find out pretty soon. Thought is, one windmill over here and then a bakery close to the granary means that uh, all three stages should easily be able to transport around. Hopefully we start producing oodles and oodles of bread. Oof, oof, really starting to run low on some money now though. Taxes ain't seeming to cut it. Upkeep, pretty darn high. Lots of construction projects. Yeah, admittedly. Um, yeah, this is a lot of construction projects. But it'll all be worth it, right? All right, first of the wheat harvest is coming together. Goody goody gumdrop. Um, how are we looking as far as that? How much wheat does this turn into? Drop off, okay, that's seven right there from a pretty small amount. Yeah, 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 we can get like 50, 60 or so wheat for every one of these harvests. That's not so bad. And then how much does that translate into once we start actually milling this into flour? Uh, one flour for three wheat. Okay. So you do need a pretty hefty amount of wheat in order to make a decent amount of flour. But this is a decent amount of wheat being produced for only two workers, and we can build on this. We can make this a heck of a lot bigger and better. A stargazer is approaching my village. A stargazer? 
I have no idea what that means. Is it some sort of a seer? Bad weather is coming. We recommend we stock up as much food as we can while the weather is good. Oh, oh goody. Yes, no, this is what I need right now. <laughs> Crippling lack of resources. Uh-huh, okay. Um, what happened to the fish, by the way? Did the fish move? Uh-oh. Wait, are the fish gone? Does, can someone please get in the boat? Oh, the fish have moved They're all the way over here now. No. Right, okay. Well, we need more fish, for sure. That is a thing. Um, we'll go ahead and place one of these down. I can't afford it, because I'm out of gold! No! Well, at least we have a bakery. One flour and one water becomes four bread. Okay. So that ain't half bad, to be honest. Um... Huh. And we got a well right next door, so this will be pretty quick. Yeah, I think we're about to start producing a whole load of food, and that's good. And I actually will be able to unlock another trade route with Davenport, and we'll be able to sell bread to Middle. It's not worth a lot of money, but if you can overproduce the crud out of it, it could still be worth something to me. Oh, gosh. All right. Well, the money's just now starting to come in. I don't know. Maybe we can still find a way to make this all work, but things are starting to get a little on the tight side. But it's okay. It's okay. If only I had a way of using my dang clothes. <laughs> if I had a way of using my dang clothes, I think we'd be fine. But no, it's all right. We'll start producing lots and lots of bread. We've got our soldiers. I'm still waiting for a mission from the dang king, because that doesn't seem to be happening very much. And then, uh, yeah, if we can just keep building up some prosperity and some wealth... We're almost ready to move on to some more production chains. Flourishing right down here, for example. Yep, tool production, beer production, luxuries, sculptures. So much more to do. Thank you all very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If so, I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, make sure you hit that notify bell, and I will see you guys next time in Foundation.